Hey, today we're going to learn everything we need to know to get started with Affinity Designer version 2. I will go over all of the tools and fundamental features of the software. And after this one video, you should be able to start your journey with this a great vector editing program. As you may know already, Affinity Designer is just a single purchase. So that's way more affordable than Adobe Illustrator right now. Okay, so let's get started with a new document. So here I am in the software. This is the desktop version for Mac. I'm creating a blank new document that will be A4. Click create. And here we are. We got a blank white page. Let's just draw something quickly. So we got something to talk about, move around. I will head straight to shapes here and select a hard shape. So there's dedicated hard shape tool, that's right. If you hold shift, you can maintain a nice proportion. Let's change the color. You can see the color of it on the right here in the color panel. The ring like thing, that's the stroke color. So the color around the shape. Actually, I don't want any stroke color, so I will keep it transparent. And for the fill color, I will change it into something more like a pink. And while we are here, you may consider switching to the wheel. I know many people prefer that method. So click this little hamburger menu on the right, select the wheel, and here's a very familiar, very user friendly way of picking colors. So when you move around 360, you're picking different hue. And then the triangle thing, that's the full saturation, that's the one. And here, top is the full darkness, and this one here is the full brightness. And everything in between, that's for you to play with. All right, oversaturated red hot chip. That's what we need. Now we can start with tools. The very first tool on the list here, that's the move tool. That's your default tool. The move tool will move the entire object. But not only that, the move tool can help you with basic transformations. So you can rotate your object. If you hold shift on your keyboard, you will be jumping 15 degrees. All right, we can rotate the object. We can also scale the object up and down. And as you can see, I can stretch it as well. So if you want to avoid stretching, hold shift again. Shift is this very useful keyboard shortcut, good to remember. All right, if you hover your mouse kind of outside it, you can even drag it like that. So move tool, move all of the tools and also basic transformations. There's one cool thing I need to show you. If you use move tool, by default, you're just moving the shape, right? But if you press and hold command on your keyboard, you can duplicate it very quickly. So just press command, use the move tool, like you normally move shape, but instead of moving it, you're creating copies of it. That's very helpful. By the way, how to go back now, we could hit delete on the keyboard or backspace, but you could also just use command Z, command Z. And that's the second shortcut. Remember, undo, undo, undo. Very useful because with graphic design software, we usually ex experiment, trying to do stuff. Then we undo and maybe approach the same problem, different angle, different tools. All right. So that's the first tool, cover. What is the next tool? That's your artboard tool. Right now, there's only one artboard, one page in this document. When you click the insert artboard for the first time, you're kind of unlocking the feature. So I didn't put any new artboard. I just unlock this. And now if I click it again, take a look. I got the second page. I can put one more page here. You can even draw it by hand. Your artboards can come with different sizes. There are some predetermined sizes as well. If you zoom out, I like to zoom out a bit old school, so I press common minus. If you zoom out, you can rearrange it. 
And good thing about Artboard is you can actually export this document as multi-page PDF. If you've got multiple Artboards, you can keep them as pages in your PDFs. Or you can simply export just one Artboard when you need. So we can have Artboards of different sizes like Instagram posts, Facebook, this, that, and then you can export them separately. Keep all of the stuff in one document, but use them for different purposes. All right, we can get rid of the artboard same way. Just hit delete, and we are back to the one artboard. If you've got only one artboard, the easiest way to zoom back is to press Command Zero on your keyboard, and it will always give you this optimal level of zoom. All right, so that's the second thing. That's the artboard tool. What's the third thing? That's the node tool. To demonstrate the node tool, I will need to turn this shape. How I know this is a shape layer. On the right side in the layer panel, if you hover your mouse next to that layer that is selected right now, I can see the name of that shape. So this is a special type of layer with that shape. But if I convert this to curves, now that's a regular vector curve and with that and our node tool node tool looks a bit like the move tool but it's white and the node tool will not move the whole shape but only move certain nodes so we can move them those nodes we can adjust them more than that we can actually delete them so if you click on the node and hit delete it's gone we can use that to add new nodes so just click on the curve and this will add a new node you may notice that two kind of nodes one is the circle one is the square thing so one node is the curvy one when we can adjust the curve easily and one is the sharp one in that case it will be ending with the sharp like shape you can easily transform the sharp into smooth one back to the sharp one if i grab this guy and make it into sharp one take a look we got this sharp ending here and here all right so the node tool is really really helpful and also you can use it to work with lines so let me just quickly draw a line all right i need to put a stroke in that line because there will be no fill color here. It's not a closed shape. So I select a stroke color now. And you can head to the stroke panel here on the right side and decide how thick the line should be. And while, when we are here, we can also explore other options. We can make a dash line. We can control that from here to two. All right. So that's the dash line. We can make also a texture line style if you got a, some kind of brush on it but for the regular line we can also control the pressure here so we can kind of simulate using a nice tablet and we got some kind of like pressure thing that we actually did with just this curve here so it's we press hard first and then gently and then a little bit again and that's how we can apply the pressure to your stroke to your line but let me reset that first. And let's back to what we've been talking about. I'll be talking about the node tool. So we can also use the node tool, this white guy here, with lines. So we can move those nodes around. We can convert them. You can add new nodes. And you can also use that to split the line. So if I select this node, Take a look, there's option to break curve here. And with that, we split this line into two because we break that node. All right, so now that's how we can use the node tool. Super handy. Node tool is one of the most powerful tools because we can always go back with the node tool and readjust everything. The next thing on the list, that's contour tool. So let's grab a shape again. We need a shape. Then a contour tool and this tool will add a contour around or you can pull it inside to make it smaller. You can also decide what kind of corner do you need. And you can use that radius here, this slider as well. You can type it from the keyboard 
all of this is here and if you are happy with your new look you can even bake this appearance so it's become part of that shape all right let's get rid of that i draw a new shape to test the next tool the next tool on our list is the corner tool as you may predict already it's for rounding corners but you can do it individually here you can just round one corner sorry let's go undo grab the corner tool first round one corner take a look we can select what type of corner do you need and as you can imagine because we got so much freedom here it can actually be used to build shapes so take a look what i got here i use just the corner tool but we end up with interesting shape just using the corner tool a bit underrated in my opinion all right now we are moving to the next thing that's the famous pen tool pen tool is the most frustrating tool in the program why because it's such a powerful tool give you the full freedom so you can draw whatever you need right you can draw whatever you need but because of that it's easy to make some mistakes here and there pen tool is for drawing actually it's for placing those notes we are not drawing the line you must change shift your mindset a bit take a look i placing the note and then i placing a note and the line just appear between them i placing the note i still holding my mouse down so i can adjust the curve and the line kind of appears between them right so don't think about drawing the lines think about placing your notes how you will place your notes where they should be and then we close the shape we can fill that shape of course if you make a bit of mistake with your pen tool go back to the note tool and readjust that's how we roll we don't need to make a perfect brush stroke pen stroke in the vector graphics the cool thing about vector graphic is you can just always readjust your notes realign your vectors and end up with a really impressive illustration even you are not very artistic person i would say so this is very technical way of doing graphics all right i like the fact that we can always grab this note tool and save ourselves that's cool let's move forward this next tool called pencil tool and some people are disappointed with the pen tool they do not understand the whole concept of placing notes so they just grab this one and this one is more like a drawing the line the downside is it's harder to close the shape and as you can see we still got those notes on that line how can we control them we cannot the program see our line and try to place those notes for us so it's more for like organic lines or i always suggest using pen tool because in pen tool we got this full control right we can do the very same thing but i got full control every step on the way all right so that's was pen tool if i do the same thing with pencil i'm making this line but only after i done I see those notes and the shape is still not close we can use auto close feature here let's try again that's nice now the shape is close and we can put the color in and again we always got our note tool if you got missing note you want to add the note you can always do that with the note tool and why we are talking about pencil and pen tool because they kind of works together very similar purpose i will give you one extra tip for the pen tool take a look when i draw the pen tool the line just appears when i put the second note right and then i must put the third note and now the lines appears again so i kind of need to have a bit of experience a bit of the intuition with the pen tool that's why it's a bit frustrating for beginners but we can turn on something called rubber bending mode so when you select your pen tool search for rubber bending mode here at the top rubber band mode turn it on take a look i just placed the first note and what is this blue line 
This blue line is the prediction of the curve of the next one. So that's very helpful and I don't understand why this is not turned on by default. So turn it on right now, okay? This is really helpful. Take a look. This was the prediction. Of course, I can change how curvy it is on the second node. And again, I got the prediction. If I click, 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 I got straight lines. If I click and hold, I'm making curvy lines. If you into straight lines, you can also change to the line mode. When you go to pen tool thing, there's also a line mode that will allow you to draw straight lines if you don't plan to make close shapes, or you can make also the polygon mode when you're making shapes with straight lines. All right, so explore your options at the top. Some of them are really helpful, like this rubber bending mode. All right, we already covered the pencil, a very similar the pen tool we can stabilize this a little bit to get smoother line but we cannot fully control those notes the next thing on the list that's a vector brush tool very misleading name guys because we are drawing a vector path like with the pencil so that's the curve and then we can select the brush that will be applied to that right the problem with it is All right, now I'm using vector brush. We can modify the color, we can change the brush here. We can change the size of the brush as well. The problem with this vector brush is not the vector brush. It's actually a vector curve. So take a look. If I select this with the node tool, I see only the line and I can change that line. So that's good but I cannot expand this into shape. This is a raster brush that is stretched on this vector curve. So be careful, they call it vector brush. It's just a vector path with the raster brush on the top, unfortunately. All right, let's clear that by selecting all with the move tool and hitting delete on the keyboard. What next? There is a knife tool on the list here. So we get from sharp tools. My favorite of them, my favorite way of demonstrating the knife tool is to draw an egg first. So I using this oval here. I don't want the stroke color. I want to change the fill color to be like egg shell color, something like that. Now I will convert to curves so I can move those two nodes down. You don't need to move them one by one. We can select two nodes just like this and pull them down together. If you want to pull them in the straight line, hold shift. Shift again, huh? Shift will lock us into straight line and we got this nice looking egg. Now grab your knife tool and cut through this egg. You must pop out on another side. And this way we split it into two shapes. If I grab the move tool, I can take the top of the egg and move it out. Here's our egg. We crack it with the knife tool. You can always double check on your layer panel. Now we got two curves. Layer panel is located on the right by default. It's a good way if you want to select certain shapes as well. You don't need to click them here on the artboard. You can click them on the layer panel as well. All right, we learn about knife tool. What's next? That's a vector fill tool. So if I grab this, I can fill this shape with color, but that's pointless because for shape like that, you can just change the color here. So what's the point of using that bucket tool in the vector program? Let me show you. Let's create a situation where well, this thing will be useful. So I grab a pen tool, sorry, pencil tool here. I don't need to close that. Let's try again with just line. All right, we got line number one, line number two, line number three. We got three separate lines. So there's no way 
of putting the color in between them here to this triangle. But if I select this area, all three lines together, and then grab this useful bucket, vector bucket tool, I can now put the color here, and it will create a brand new vector shape for me in this area. That's super handy. And to prove that this vector, take a look, we got nodes, it's a proper vector. Very nice. Another situation that we can use that will be when you've got overlapping shapes. All right, and you select overlapping shapes and you wanna have a different color in that area here. We can grab a bucket tool, then you can select the color and then we can hover and recolor only the area we need. So this was not a new shape at first, but now if you open this ellipse, you will see there's actually a vector shape in that group here. Nice. By the way, this feature is a bit hidden because it was not ready for version 2.0 for this big release. They added in 2.1, so some people miss on that tool. So there is a proper vector bucket tool now in Affinity Designer. All right, what's next? That's a gradient tool. To apply gradient, we need a space for it. So that's our shape. Now we can apply gradient on it. And the good thing is it's a live gradient. So I didn't even finish applying the gradient, but I can see it right away. That's nice. I don't need to like try, try, try. No, let's hold it. Nice. Let's go up here. So we can modify the color. By the way, you can also open the wheel from here if you are a big fan of that color wheel. Okay. The end color over here, we can add extra color in the center if you like. And cool thing, we can actually add the noise. I like to add a bit of noise to dark colors. So that's the vector noise. Nice. By default, it's a linear gradient, so it's like a line. But we can change that as well. It can be ellipse, so like a circle. We got a radial and also this conical one that you may see before when you got this sharp connection here on this side. I like to change to solid and you will get only one color. You can change to linear and you loading the gradient by default from that color you got already. So you don't even need to select the gradient tool from the list. So let's say you got your color in your shape. You go to the fill area here and you can change that you want to move from a solid color into the gradient just from here as well. Or you can select the gradient tool and you will see the type is solid right now. So it's not really gradient, but if you move it to linear, you got a brand new gradient based on that solid color. So you got a good start because you already got that first color in that gradient and you can just modify the second color. All right, that's your gradient tool. Nothing impressive here. Unfortunately, no mesh gradients in Affinity Designer right now. We are on version 2.3. Version 2.4 is already in beta test, so I can tell you from, from kind of behind the scene, it's not there as well. So no mesh gradients just yet. What next? We got place tool for placing images. There's also a vector crop tool that I never ever use. So let's draw a shape. Vector crop tool give us this cropping marks when we can crop the shape like that. Why I never use that tool? I'm going to show you later how we can do this effect way better. Let's delete that for now. And we finally reach the bottom part of the tool panel. You got the rectangle and the oval tool for drawing shapes. I've been drawing shapes a lot today, so we already know how to use them. If you press and hold shift, you will have a one-to-one -one ratio. We can set up roundness for the corners from here, straight from here, even without using the corner tool. 
Keep in mind, some shades come with some extra control points. Like in this case, I got this orange point. Let me demonstrate this on the more, more complex shape. So let's open this whole long shape selection and pick a shape like a star maybe. In that case, you can see I got three orange points and they control different aspects of this shape. So I can make this end of the arm rounded. I can make this space between arms going in and out. And I can finally round this space between them. So you can round it in. You, if you need to add more points, more arms, you can also change that from the slider at the top. So keep in mind, some of those tools come with smart controls. And this way you can very quickly morph them into new shapes like this. That's nice. There is also a shape builder tool. To demonstrate that, I will need one more shape because we cannot build a new shape with just one shape. We need two different shapes. And you need to select them both. How you can do that? You can simply click outside and drag the selection around. You can also click on one shape, hold the shift and click on the second one. Then go for Shape Builder tool. In this tool, we got two modes. One is the plus mode, one is the minus mode, adding or subtracting. If I use the plus mode, and I can drag now the line indicating what I want to add together this part, with this part, with this part. Release your mouse, you got a new shape. Let's undo Command Z. Now use the minus mode. What do you want to delete? Maybe I want to delete in only the center thing. It's gone. Maybe this one as well. Gone. And that's my new shape now. So Shape Builder 2 allows you for interactions between multiple shapes. So let's create that situation. Let's draw more than one shape, more than two. Maybe I will create several different shapes. Do you remember how we can quickly copy shapes with the Move tool? Just press Command and we can copy them quickly. All right. Now I will place this guy in the center. Can you see how it's nicely snapping to the center of my screen? Because I turn on snapping this little magnet over here. You can turn it on and off. You can also control what do you want to snap to. All right, let's rotate the second one. I hold shift so I can have a nice rotation here. This guy will be rotated like that and this one this way. And if I don't want to realign all of that by hand, I can just select all of those shapes and use the alignment panel at the top. Let's align horizontally and vertically. Now I see I mess it up a bit. So this one needs to be rotated like that. All right, perfect. By the way, if this video is a bit too fast for you, feel free to slow it down in the video options at the bottom right corner. And the other way around as well. If it's too slow, you feel bored, speed me up a bit. Maybe it will be better learning experience for you. Also, you can always pause and also rewind the video. So keep that in mind. You are in control here. All right, back to the topic. We got this combination of four different shapes. I select them all. Now I select the Shape Builder tool, very handy tool. And now I'm going to create a brand new shape out of those three sections. And here again, here again, here again. Drag and release. And we transform that combination into a nice logo or symbol. We can even fill those areas with colors, no problem. Take a look. All right, so that's how you use the Shape Builder tool. We're almost at the very end of the tool panel. So what, what's left? There is a nice artistic text and the frame text tool 
artist, I guess, for uh, one or two lines of text, like headlines, when we can type the text, modify the font. And by the way, a newest feature in the program is now we got this little heart shape. You can click on it to add the font to your favorites. So if you've got this problem, got too many fonts, you can create your favorite list. We can change the size of it. And of course, we can modify the color by using the color wheel on the right, like before. All right, so that's for our text. And the second one, the frame text tool, the difference is this one is more like we kind of selecting the longer area for the longer text. For now, I can insert filler text if I like. And later on, if I got the real text from my editor, I can change that to the correct text. But you can use the filler text first so you can kind of deal with the formatting, right? Keep in mind, there are some options here at the top. And you can modify some settings of your text by clicking this A icon here. Like position and transforming, what is the distance between lines and all of that, it's here in this pop-up window for character. Nice, that's the text tool. What's below the text tool? A very interesting addition. There are two pickers. One is the classic color picker. So we can pick the color. If you didn't select anything yet, if you pick the color of something, like this gray backdrop, or let's add something here. So we got an uh, interesting color. All right, if I didn't select anything, just use the picker and I click on this color, it goes to here, to quick picker color. And then I can click on that to put it as my main color. And also you can use that quick picker from here. So if you select the quick picker, press and hold, and now you are in quick picker mode when you can just put the color in here without switching to the tool yet. It's really simple, but it's hard to explain. So I would like you to try yourself. If you click on this picker and hold you will get this color picking mode when you can select the color and the good thing is you can select it from outside the program take a look i'm selecting the color from my interface here all right i select the blue color and it's still inside the picker but if i click on that blue circle it's jump into my main color and the next shape i draw will be in that color if you got shape selected in that moment and use the quick picker you can even put it directly in that shape all right so for picking colors we got quick picker on the right inside the color panel and the regular picker here from the tool list but there's also this blue picker called style picker tool so we need to create two shapes so i can demonstrate that to you so we got this a little star And let's copy that command, moving around. All right. I will click on this first star and we will head to the layer panel on the right. Select FX below layer effects. Now we can add different effects to it. I encourage you to kind of check every effect experiment with them. As you can see, it's applying to that selected layer. Sometimes we create a really interesting effect and we want to transform that effect into the next shape, next object, right? We don't want to start from scratch every time. That's why we can use this style picker tool. So let me add this gradient with the overlay mode. And then maybe I will put like outline on it. And then we add also all the shadow. There's some kind of shadow popping out. All right, that's my weird style. I click close and now I need to put this on that other shape. So I can select this other shape thing. And then 
go for the second style picker tool. Now at the top, you can decide what you want to pick. All or none. All decide yourself. Stroke, fill, layer opacity, layer effects. Now I click on this guy. And I pick that style for this new shape. Now this style picker is loaded with that style. I can unload it if I want to pick the new style. Or I can use it on another shape as well. As you can see, I'm on the smallest screen, so I cannot see all of my tools. There are still two more areas in my tool panel. You know what? Before we explore that, let's fix that problem. If you are like me, you've got smaller screen. In my case, that's 13 inch laptop. I will need to adjust my tools panel on the left. We can do that. Head to view at the top and search for customized tools. From here, you can drag and drop any tool you need to your tool panel. You can also change the number of columns you want to use. I will switch to two columns. And this way, all of my tools can fit now. You can also consider rearranging them. For example, I like the Node tool to be next to my Move tool. And I never ever use the view tool but i will keep it from now to demonstrate that first you can also drag this line to create a separator between different sections in your tool panel and if you like some tools to pop up like for the shapes for example like hard shape tool normally it's in the group right you must open the group first and pick it up you can put it directly here if you are using this really often all right, let's click close. And with this new double column tool panel on the left, let's explore the remaining tools. So there's area tool. If you select that, you can decide about the scale of your drawing. That's for planning. If you create a plan or map in Affinity Designer, you can actually make a real scale like 1 to 10, 1 to 100. That should help you out with your plan. So we can make a scale, but also if you are in that mode and you click on something, you can see the area of that, laid of walls, of lines. So it's really for making plans, detailed plans, maps and stuff like that. So that's your area tool. And there's also a measure tool when we can measure stuff with temporary lines like that, like this is... 77 millimeters so if you are actually planning to manufacture some actual products based on your illustration on your drawings that can be also a handy for checking unfortunately we cannot stick it right now so everybody been asking me how can you make this line stick and left here like that okay i switch the tool back and the line disappeared so we asked the Affinity developers about this already. We hope that they will add the stickiness to those measurements. It's next update. Okay. So that's a measurement tool. And below that, we got our zoom tool that I never use. Why? You know why? Because I zoom in with the keyboard. So if you are on desktop mode like me, you can just press Command plus Command minus to zoom in and out. If you are on iPad version, it's even easier. Just pinch with your fingers. And speaking of iPad version, there is a controller for you on iPad to indicate some virtual buttons. So today I show you some helpful tips and tricks, right? Like press command to duplicate or pr press shift to rotate 15 degrees. If you wonder how you can use that knowledge on iPad, you can. You can turn on your virtual buttons and you can actually press shift or commands on iPad as well. All right, so that's the zoom tool. And the last remaining tool, that's our view tool, also called pan tool or hand tool that allow us to drag the camera around. So if you are in the zoom in mode, you, want, you can drag yourself around. And I never ever use this tool from the tool panel. Why? Because if I'm using a tool, let's say a pen tool, I don't want to change to that tool. I simply press and hold spacebar 
and then I can use that temporary. I'm still holding the space bar. Move around, move around, and release space bar, and you jump back to the pen tool to the previous tool. It's way better for your workflow. All right, seems like we cover all of the basics on the left. So that's the tool panel. We still got stuff here at the top and on the right. So let's focus our attention to the top right now. The very first thing we can see are personas. So we got designer persona, that's the default one for editing vectors. But there's also a pixel persona. If I click on that, everything we learn is obsolete because we got totally new tool set. All of those tools in the pixel persona, as you may guess, are for modifying raster images. That's right, you can modify raster images in Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is not exactly an alternative to Adobe Illustrator, it's more like two in one hybrid. So it's mostly for vectors, but if you really need, you can actually do some raster work on your raster graphics as well. And no surprise, we got multiple selections tool. There's a raster brush, eraser tool, raster bucket tool, and a few more. So there's a burn, smudge, and blur. Very basic set for raster editing, but it's here. It will be not used by photographers to enhance the pictures, but it's used by illustrators. So let's say you create a beautiful vector illustration using designer persona and then you want to add this organic touch to it so you can switch to pixel persona and use some raster brushes adding raster textures and work with that. All right and the last persona on the list the next one is export persona and the tools are so limited here because our attention should be focused on the right side when we got export options we can decide which ki what kind of format do we need and export our graphics it's really cool because if you got multiple icons you can create slices for them and export them all at once very nice let's jump back to the main persona so designer persona personas are different interfaces designer is the main one for vectors Pixel Persona is for enhancing raster elements and Export Persona is for the finishing export. Especially if you've got complex design that you need to export into multiple files like icon sets. Alright, what else is here that we should talk about? we got some basic transfer options like flipping horizontally and vertically, rotating clockwise and clockwise from here. We can align. I already show alignments option here. And keep in mind while you are aligning, there's also option for distribution. So let's create a few more elements. Misalign elements. Who did that? All right. And now we use we select them all first. So I click here, select them all. Go to alignment. Let's align them vertically nice let's distribute them so let's say the distribute terribly like that i go for alignment and then we got distribution as well so space horizontally will do the trick by the way if you got three shapes selected and you try to rotate them you will end up with something like that you're rotating from the center here and even you can move that center, it's still not rotating as individual shapes. So what you need to do is you need to head to the top and click transform objects separately. And now it seems like only the first one is selected, but pay attention to your layer panel. They're all still highlighted. So if I rotate the first one, now every selected shape is transforming separately. I can even scale them. A little trick for you guys if you want to transform multiple objects, but in the separate manner. All right. So we already cover snapping and magnets. 
you can snap to different elements and it will give you those temporary guides take a look it's nicely snapping and helping me out relocate my object i can even locate that perfectly in between those two shapes without any alignments because of snapping and we finally moving to the most important part of the top panel to demonstrate that one i will need two new shapes let's go with the very classic square and circle with two shapes like that we can test the boolean operation also called geometry sometimes called pathfinder by some adobe fans so we can unite two shapes together but wait mark you just tell us to use shape builder tool right this thing on the left here in the panel we can unite them together as well yeah that's right the shape builder tool is for more complex compositions but we still got options to do just simple actions between two three shapes if you just want to unite everything together you can select them bam undo let's try the next action called subtract now the shape at the top make a hole in the shape below that this option for intersection so we got only the intersecting part left there's also XOR, so difference to intersection when the intersecting part is gone. And the last one is interesting because the last one will divide it into three separate shapes. All right, so that's another way how we can build shapes. We already talked about colors and take a look at different panels here one for stroke, appearance. Same for layers, we got layers, we got transform, and we can see exact size of the object. There's navigation one, if you're fan of that. We got brushes and styles, and all of that are from the studios panel. So we can literally drag out this navigator, pull it out, and relocate this in the program to be in different position. Sometimes it can even stick, so I can stick it to this side. All right, we can put it back here to be above our colors. Drag it out and close it if you don't need it. How we can reopen those studios and snap them into our interface? Easy stuff. Go to Window and you will see which studios are turned on. The one that are on right now got the check mark. So if you need history because you love to undo a lot, click on History. And it appears here. Now I can go all the way back to the very beginning of this video and we can learn everything once more. Okay, so that's how you do it. You can turn on different studios to modify your interface for your needs. Then we got our color wheel and layer panel. In the layer panel, we can add a special layer effects. We tried out already on that star, remember? There's our FX here. But there's also a nice addition in version 2. Warp. So we can actually vector warp using some presets. Or we can use the mesh and warp ourselves those vector shapes, logos and stuff like that with the proper vector warp so that's a nice addition and if you are happy with your result and you want to kind of bake this in you can convert to curves and you end up with the new shape all right i mentioned before that i hate using the crop tool and i got a better method so my method is when i got a shape and i need only half of it i make a second shape right and those geometry options we just learned about this boolean operations i can subtract and i got half of the shape left keep in mind if you cannot modify the shape with the node tool you cannot see your nodes maybe you must convert your shape into curves so when you draw the shape for the first time and you try to modify it in detail you just see this orange control point 
click convert to curves to unlock the shape. Always pay attention to the layer panel to see which layer is currently selected. All right, guys, I think we cover everything you need to know to get started with your Affinity Designer journey. One last thing before you go, because that can make, give you trouble. If you're working on some PNGs that you want to export without backdrop, right? Let's test this out. So we got this little star here. If you want to export this without the backdrop, the easiest way is to actually get rid of the backdrop from your artboard. You can click Document Setup and you can go to Color and turn on Transparent Backdrop. And you got this very familiar checkerboard indicating transparency. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Keep in mind, I got almost 200 tutorials for Affinity Designer. So feel free to explore the whole playlist and learn more about this great software. I will see you in the next video. Bye.